We may have a couple folks that are still making their way in, but it looks like we've gotten pretty much everybody in. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Kurt Barker. I'm principal here at Downtown West High School, and it is my pleasure uh, to be able to welcome you to our third annual uh, Department Excellence Awards ceremony. So uh, I got to tell you, I am very thankful uh, that you are actually parents able to join us when we put out the initial invitation we weren't sure whether we were going to be able to have anybody but the students here and then it looked like we would be able to get one parent and we're able to get, ultimately get two and I'm just I'm so thankful uh, that you all could join us today this morning uh, we'll be recognizing seniors who have distinguished themselves in each of the departments represented here at West to be eligible for one of these awards students must be nominated by a classroom teacher and voted on by their respective department members. Everyone here today has overcome numerous challenges and is worthy of being recognized and celebrated. However, we do not want to overlook the fact that we experienced a loss yesterday. And we ask you to join us for a brief moment of silence before we continue with our ceremony. Thank you. In just two weeks, we will celebrate the entire class of 2021 through our annual commencement ceremony. This morning, however, we have the opportunity to acknowledge individual student accomplishments in the areas of academics, athletics, arts, music, and service. As you can imagine, an assembly like this has many details that need to be coordinated. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Mrs. Turk, who has put in numerous hours diligently preparing our program for today. Thank you, Mrs. Turk. In the interest of time, because we have a lot of students to recognize, we will not introduce each presenter this morning. Rather, we've asked each presenter to follow along in the program and come to the microphone at the appropriate time. Likewise, we ask that each award recipient remain at the front of the auditorium with the department presenter. When all department award winners uh, have been announced, they will be photographed together with the presenter before being seated. I'd like to begin our award ceremony by recognizing this year's National Merit Scholarship Award winners. These students have distinguished themselves by scoring among the top 3% in the nation on the PSAT when compared with over 1.5 million of their peers. Please join me in congratulating these students as they come to the podium. First, our commended student, Shelby Geiger. Secondly, our National Merit finalists, Nick Cassano, Isabella Hughes, and Dylan O'Hara. Give them all one more round of applause. I have two additional awards to present this morning. The first is this year's best of class. For distinguishing himself among his peers, both in leadership and academics, and with an overall GPA of 4.7361. Yes, that's accurate. Please join me as we recognize this year's Best of Class Award winner. Congratulations, Mr. Nicholas Casano.
so look, this isn't in my script, but uh, Nick, it was 16 AP courses, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's uh, tremendous, tremendous, each year, yeah, thank you, thank you. Very good, well done, both. All right, the next award that I get to present this morning is the Principal Service Award, given for commitment to service both in school and in our community. For being an outstanding member of the National Honor Society and a student that could always be counted on to serve with integrity and distinction. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the Principal Service Award of Excellence. This year's winner is Maureen Hammond. Good morning. I'd like to take an opportunity to congratulate all of today's awards recipients and the entire class of 2021. This morning I have the honor of recognizing four outstanding student athletes for their contributions to their individual teams, the athletic department, and the entire school community. The first award is the Coaches Award. The Coaches Award is given each year to a male and female student athlete that are very coachable in their sport, go above and beyond for the betterment of their team, and exhibit such characteristics as hard work, integrity, and a team-first attitude. To be considered for this award, the candidate must have a minimum GPA of 2.5. Our first recipient is a four-year varsity member of both the football and wrestling teams. He is a 2020 all chess mount selection in football and is a 2021 all chess mount selection in wrestling. This student athlete exhibits all of the above qualities and more. His coaches say he is an all-around great kid, an outstanding work ethic, and has great character. He was always ready to work hard, and his demeanor on and off the field are second to none. This young man has a cumulative GPA of a 3.29 and will be continuing his academic and wrestling career at Lake Erie College in the fall. It's an honor to present the 2021 Male Coaches Outstanding Coaches Award to Matt McHale. <laughs> Our second recipient is a four-year member of the West soccer and basketball teams. This student athlete has gone above and beyond for her teammates. Her coaches say she is a fierce competitor, always giving her all in both games and practices, and is a total team player who puts the team first no matter what her role. This young lady has a cumulative GPA of 4.18 and will be continuing her academic and athletic career at East Stroudsburg University in the fall. It's an honor to present the 2021 Female Coaches Award to Jessica Harple. Our next award is the Outstanding Athlete Award. The Outstanding Athlete Award is given each year to a male and female student athlete that exhibits such qualities as leadership, sportsmanship, and overall athletic ability. Our first recipient is a four-year member of the West Cross Country, Indoor Track, and Spring Track and Field teams. He is the captain of the Cross Country team, leading the team to the 2019 PIAA AAA State Championship. In 2019, he is a district runner-up, going on to finish in sixth place at the 2019 Cross Country Championships. In 2020, he was a district champion and finished in fourth place at the PIAA State Meet. This past weekend, he finished in second place in the 3200 meter and will compete yet again this weekend for another chance to win PIAA gold. His coaches say he carries himself with confidence and a sense of gratitude that is only earned through hard work and discipline. He is kind-hearted and considerate, determined and passionate, and is as skilled and knowledgeable as any high school athlete I have ever coached. This young man has a GPA of a 3.34 and will be continuing his academic and athletic career at Northern Arizona University. Please join me in congratulating your 2021 male outstanding athlete, Aiden Barnhill. Yeah, 
Our second recipient is a four-year member of the West softball program. She is a four-year varsity member, playing a pivotal role in the 2019 district championship team. Her coach describes her as the definition of a great teammate, always playing her best in the clutch and bringing a ton of enthusiasm and energy to each practice and game. She'll be back on the field tomorrow with her teammates as West is the number five seed in the District One tournament and be hosting Garnet Valley here at four o'clock, excuse me, five o'clock. This young lady will be furthering her academic and athletic career at Syracuse University in the fall. Please join me in congratulating your 2021 outstanding female athlete, Taylor Posner. Good morning, everyone. It is my honor to present this year's A-Team Senior Award, academic, A-Team, excuse me, I didn't want to say that word, A-Team Senior Award, I'll explain later, A-Team <laughs> Senior Award to a student that has been a captain, a true leader, a, an elite player, uh, a co-coach, and, and much more. I am very pleased uh, to present this year's award to Bella Hughes. Uh, I will now be presenting uh, the Social Studies Award, Senior Award. This year's Social Studies Award is going to be a senior, going to a senior that showed a strong work ethic, unique input, and a genuine interest in social studies. It is also fitting that this student getting this award, this student getting this award from the social studies because her dry wit fits right in with ours. In honor to this student, and I hope she noticed, I wrote this intro using seven letters or less. It explains the awkwardness at times. Wait, awkwardness. It's my pleasure to give this year's award to Bella Hughes. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, it's my honor to give out the art department awards. My name is Ann Russell. My first award goes to Lee Petrel for drawing. The second award goes to Sarah Stockdale for ceramics. The third award goes to Claudia Lucena for 2D design.
I'd like to um, also acknowledge Victoria Naftal for her work in 3D design. And last but not least, I'd like to acknowledge Jordan Gray for her design for the senior mantle. And you can see it behind us on the canvas. Good job, Jordan. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ashley Rachowskis, and I serve as the building leader for the co computer science and business department here at West. Um, we are giving out five awards, one for each of our full credit classes. And uh, I had the pleasure over the last four years of having and or getting to know all five of these students, although I don't teach all of the courses. Um, so I'm really excited. They'll tell you that's generally what you get from me. So um, I also may there may be a few tears, uh, happy tears. So the first award uh, for our accounting class goes to Anthony Florkowski. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you. Good luck, buddy. The second award for our AP Computer Science course uh, goes to the one and only Jeremy Peterson. The third award is for our AP Computer Science Principles course, and it goes to Maya Blackburn. The next award uh, is for our entrepreneurship course. Uh, goes to Savannah Mearing. <laughs> Sorry, I have not seen her all year. So this is the first time I've had a chance to see her. I told you there would be tears. Um, the last award for our department is for our finance and investment course. Uh, and this is a student who I think brings as much energy to the course as I do, Zachary Yaros. I'm Dana Clay, the uh, English department building leader, and I have three awards to present. The first one is the Creative Writing Award. The Creative Writing Award is presented to a senior who exhibits an unusual flair in works of an original nature. The English department is pleased to present this award to Charlotte Decker, who will... <laughs> Thank you very much. Take care who will attend Susquehanna University in the fall for creative writing. Uh, the English Department's Theater Arts Award is given to a graduating senior who has distinguished himself by his contributions to the theater arts program here at West. This year, the recipient is Justin Hyatt, who will be proudly serving his country as a member of the Marine Corps. And then finally, the English Department Award of Excellence is presented to a senior who has demonstrated the qualities of dedication, enthusiasm, and excellence in the study of English. This year's winner, winner excuse me, is Anna Leinberger, who will attend Thomas Jefferson University in the fall.
Thanks very much. Good morning. Um, my name is Lauren Taylor. I am the Family and Consumer Science Building Leader, and I am so excited to be able to award um, these awards to two seniors who are just amazing people, and I'm so thankful that I've, I've gotten the chance to be their teacher for at least three years, in some cases four, which is really cool to be in a content area that can have students that many years in a row. So let's start with the culinary award. That goes to Maddie Ismail. Okay, the second award is the overall FCS award and that goes to Victoria Howard. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, my name is Ed Otto. I'm the band director here at Downingtown West High School. And I have some outstanding awards to present to some outstanding individuals. And not to reiterate what uh, Ms. Taylor had just talked about, but I get the opportunity to see these guys when they come in from ninth grade, when they buy the joke that the swimming pool's on the third floor, and uh, we're just going to practice up there. And um, into what, they're, what, what they accomplished over the, these four years. And what makes this a little, a little rough sometimes, obviously, is because uh, we, we, are, we have been selected to do the Rose Bowl parade again with the band. And some of the seniors, uh, we are extending an invitation for them to come back and try to march with us. But they were very instrumental in getting, this, getting us to that spot. It had taken 10 years for the application process from over 900 bands down to 600, down to 100, and then down to the top 12 that, to, to fill those spots. So that, that's an accomplishment right there before I even say anything. Plus, we really buy into the sweat equity that we put into the program when we really use our student, our student leadership. So right now, um, I'm going to go in alphabetical here as far as the, the, the awards go. A little taller. Uh, Mr. A.J. Ayers for our leadership in the saxophone section. If he could come up, please. One of the people waving their hands out on the field, conducting, and first person there, last person to leave, uh, Ms. Gretchen Hartenstein. <laughs> Outstanding Leadership Award in the flute section, Jordan Brooke Montgomery. For the trumpet section, Ethan Blanke. I'm going to put, I guess I got to do it because it's in the slide. I can't mess the slides up. The highest award for any high school uh, band program across the United States is what we call the Semper Fidelis Award. And that goes to someone who goes above and beyond, as the Marines would say, because originally it came from the Marines. Uh, above and beyond anything you could ever ask anybody to do. First one there, last one to go. Uh, uh, solves problems, doesn't create problems. <laughs> Just everything that a band director could ask for. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this year the Semper Fidelis Award goes to Miss Gretchen Hartenstein. <laughs> but wait, there's more Gretchen. Um, the Outstanding Service Band Award also goes, so she gets a three for bonus. Thank you. Uh, 
brass section, brass section. Um, you have to have a special attitude in the brass section. It's kind of like the all-stars of a marching band kind of thing. Um, outstanding brass musician, our first award goes to Mario Sajinov. Once again, brass section, Luca DeSano. And we, can't, we just can't forget Megan Goss. Woodwind section, same kind of thing, a little different personality there. Usually if you get your music back from the flutes, it looks like it's ironed, it's better than new. If you get it back from maybe low brass or percussion section, there's like a bite out of it, a footprint or something. But um, along those traditions, uh, Kelly Flynn in the flute section. Next individual, I've, I've seen this person grow from when he first came in uh, to the bass drum section to uh, playing in the pit section, um, in our percussion section. Very outstanding individual, Ben Munier. And uh, as far as being in attendance today, last but not least, um, and I think, the, I think all the students would agree on this one, um, we had a, a student come into the program. It's one of those uh, situations where, hey, listen, I just want to make sure tomorrow when we're going on the bus, it's this, 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 this. Um, I'm uh, in, in first marching. It could have been like a car accident on the field there a little bit, um, just bumping into people and everything. And now he's just such an outstanding trombone player. Outstanding individual, always prepared. Uh, once again, first there, last to leave. Incredible student, Mr. Mac Schulz. We have an outstanding pit orchestra uh, award here, but I know Owen Chappelle is not here. But I just I know we're filming, so Owen, so thank you so much. You guys can go. Good morning, I'm Matt McCleskey. I am the building leader for music here at West. Um, first, we'd like to honor our choral students, the criteria for these awards. These students have represented us at district, regional, and state levels. First recipient represented us at the district level, and the second recipient re um, represented us at districts, uh, regional, and state competition. And we're both so proud of both of them. It is James Foley and Jolie Lloyd. And second award is for our musical theater award, and it is for students who are either in, they had to be in the musical for four years. Um, they had to have either the leading role or more than one role in their four years. And those award winners are James Foley, Nick Pierre Giovanni, and Bailey Straub. Our next award is our Musical Theater Service Award, and that goes to someone that's helped us a great deal backstage, Sonny Dietrich. <laughs> next award I present on behalf of Mrs. Gonzalez, who's out on maternity leave, and her sub, Mrs. DeSanto. Um, these are orchestra awards. The first, the first two outstanding chamber orchestra awards go to Bella Hughes and Victoria Naftal.
And finally, the Outstanding Orchestral Leadership Award goes to Jolie Lloyd. Good morning. Uh, my name is Matthew Barr, and for the past four years, it has been my distinct honor uh, to support the senior class uh, in their journey through Downingtown West High School. Uh, today, um, I'm also humbled to represent our fiscal education department on behalf of Ms. Robin Reichert, who is unable to join us today. I have three award recipients to call to the front. Our first award recipient has worked consistently in her class with a responsible, self-motivated, and positive attitude. She has shown a true appreciation and discipline for dance. This year's recipient for our dance award is Ms. Rachel Schneeberger. We have two recipients for this year's Health and Physical Education Award. Here at Downingtown West, we pride ourselves on providing a well-rounded education, both in the world of academics in addition to athletics. This year's award recipients demonstrated a positive attitude, a hard work ethic, and epitomized what we love about students at Downingtown West High School. This year's Health and Physical Education Award winners, Kalen O'Connor and James Wagner. please. Good morning. Congratulations to everybody here. Uh, my name is Brian Hassel. I serve in two different roles. First role, um, I serve as a graduation project coordinator, and on behalf of our graduation project team, I would like to award um, five young adults here who went above and beyond through a lot of uh, adversity um, and was able to, to pull off through, through a pandemic um, things that, that just went above and beyond for the Downingtown community here. So. I'd like to recognize Charlotte Decker, Rachel Markowski, Daniel Sharpless, Lance Smith, and Morgan West. Now I'm going to switch hats just a little bit. Now I have the pleasure of representing the technology and engineering department here at West. First, I'd like to recognize Ryan Cornelius for excellence in photography. <laughs> Next, I would like to recognize Aiden Guiley in the Outstanding Education, Technology Education Aerospace Engineering Award. And now I'd like to recognize uh, three individuals for Civil Engineering and Architecture Outstanding uh, Project Lead the Way Completion. Charlotte, um, Charlotte, I'm going to butcher it, I apologize. Charlotte B., Abigail Gallo, and Anna Lindbergh.
I'm going to take lessons on calligraphy next year for everybody. <laughs> uh, next, uh, I would like to award uh, engineering design development to Clayton Gons. And I'm going to call I'm going to call everybody Vignish M, Matthew Shank, and Tristan Treswell. And this award holds a little bit of a uh, special meaning. Um, I'd like to present um, to our six yearbook editors on behalf of Ms. Shovlin and I, um, the Award of Excellence in Publications. Um, so you guys are aware, it is not the easiest thing to put together a yearbook in, in the middle of a pandemic. Um, it is nearly impossible to identify 1,800 people when we can see their entire face, but when you can see here up, it just makes it that much more difficult. Um, this group by far absolutely carried us and got us to the point that graduation week year yearbooks will, will be mailed home to you. Okay, that is a testament to all six of these young ladies. So I would like to congratulate on behalf of myself and Ms. Shovlin, Sailor Anderson, Abigail Chichester, Leah Fidil, Emily Hacker, Madison Leiden, and Maddie S. And last but not least, I have the distinct pleasure of presenting the Wood Technology Award. This year's award goes to John Carrigan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Don Natale, and I am uh, here to give the Excellence Awards for the Mathematics Department. This year's recipient for Calculus AB goes to Ryan Utz. This year's recipient for Calculus BC goes to Jack McKinney. This year's recipient for Statistics goes to Bella Hughes. Um, this year's Air Force Mathematics and Science Award goes to Jack McKinney. Thank you. Good morning, and my apologies for the long jaunt to the stage. Uh, I'm Dr. Troy Podell, the coordinator of Career Readiness, and it is my distinct honor 
to present this award uh, for achievement in the career work experience program to a particularly special young lady uh, who needs my help to find opportunity like a fish needs a bicycle. Uh, th thank you, I appreciate the pity laugh. Uh, th this young person's tenacity, uh, meticulousness, uh, and kindness and zest for life are going to serve her well no matter what career path she chooses, uh, and I am just so proud of her. Uh, Abigail Chichester. I'm Amanda Combs. I am here on behalf of the science department. Um, my first award goes to um, somebody who excels in all areas of science. So that would be physics, chemistry, biology, and um, sort of the environmental area. Um, and that goes to Bella Hughes. The next awards go to a biology students, students who have excelled in biology. That is Jack Borgioni and Catherine Alton. <laughs> Hi, Kate. There you go. You're serious. Um, the next area is chemistry. Um, this, these are for students. They've taken three years of chemistry here, um, which is uh, sort of a unique situation. Uh, one of them has already won an award in uh, writing, creative writing, so despite herself, ended up taking three years of chemistry. <laughs> um, but the awards go to Charlotte Decker, Lexi Morris, and Adia Now. <laughs> I think these are in the right order. Next comes environmental science. That is Shelby Geiger and Mary Ryan. Uh, the next is for physics. I believe this young man is not here. It's Jack McKinney. The next two awards are sponsored by, or yeah, sponsored by different um, organizations. The first is the American Chemical Society, and that award goes to Ryan Schlusser. Mm -hmm. Ryan always knew the answer. <laughs> And then we also give one on behalf of the Society of Women Engineers. Uh, with highest honors, there is Sophia Bandy and Gialli Mann. Good morning. My name is Charlene Bigelow, and I'm representing both uh, the World Language Department and also I'm the senior class advisor, so I'll be honoring two groups. So on behalf of my colleagues in the World Language Department, it is my honor to congratulate the class of 21 and to wish you all the best in the future. 
Each year, the World Language Department recognizes seniors who have demonstrated excellence in the study of one or more world languages. These students have completed a minimum of four years of study, at least one of which has been at the honors or AP level. Most importantly, all of these seniors have shown their recognition of the importance of communication in another language and the opportunities that it brings. So we would like to recognize the following seniors. First, for achievement in French, very special to me, Jocelyn Kiefel, Adia No, and Caitlin Stowell. All three of these girls have been with me for pretty much their entire high school career, so not only am I honoring them, I'm going to miss them very much because I adore them. For achievement in German, Nathaniel Bulger. For achievement in Japanese, Lauren D'Eduardo. For achievement in Latin, Marcus Fuchs. And for achievement in Spanish, Holden Betts, Maya Blackburn, Ava Darkangelo, Anthony Florkowski, Isabella Hughes, and Jolie Lloyd. Thank you to all of our World Language Award winners. Congratulations. And now um, to represent the, the senior class. Um, I've, I've been the class advisor since 2003, and I've been really fortunate to work with some really wonderful leaders. But I don't think any of my leaders ever faced the adversity that this year's senior class officers faced. They did an amazing, amazing job. Um, of course, I think the thing that we're going to remember most is our prom. And it seems like it's you know, just one thing out of a senior year, but um, we faced a lot of adversity trying to put it together. They were such amazing leaders. They worked so hard. They took a lot of grief. And they put together a spectacular night that I think all, everyone in the class of 21 will remember for years to come. I'm so, so proud of them. I'm going to miss them so much, but after watching their leadership this year, I know that they're all going on to great things. So if you would please join me in congratulating your class of 2021, Senior Class President Nick Cassano. <laughs> Vice President Daniel Geyer. Secretary Lucas Eng. <laughs> and our class treasurer who has served her class for all four years of high school, Lexi Morris. Congratulations, and we're looking forward to you guys leading your class in at graduation in just a couple of weeks. Thank you.
Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here uh, this morning, taking a little bit of time out of your day uh, to be able to recognize our seniors. And uh, as everyone has said, uh, well deserving of recognition and just so thankful for the opportunity to be able to get together and take a moment to celebrate you guys. Well done. We are going to take a, uh, a brief intermission here. For those of you who are participating in the scholarship portion uh, at 1030, you're welcome to stretch your legs, go out to your car, check email, do those things, then come on back in here and we'll get started at 1030. If this portion of the program uh, was the only portion you're going to be participating in, then students, you're welcome to go back uh, to your class. Parents, thank you so much for taking the opportunity to come out. We look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to give the last couple folks just a minute. We'll get started here in about two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, Verizon has 1030, and we have military folks here, uh, so we're going to start on time. Very good. So one last request before we get started. If we have any students that are sitting with their families, if you could come down here and, and sit in your seat up here, uh, that would be great. Okay, come on down. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. go. Wonderful. Right there. Here we go. Right over there. We got you, Nick. Good deal. On the far side. Last couple students in here. Very good, guys. Wonderful. Okay, I think we're good. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know me, my name is Kurt Park. I'm the principal here at Downtown West, and I am so thankful uh, that you had a chance to come out and join us here this morning. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the 2021 Senior Scholarship and Award Ceremony. We are excited to represent, to, excited, I can almost speak here, guys. We are excited for the opportunity to recognize our seniors in person this year. Uh, we actually weren't sure if this was going to happen. Uh, we initially sent out the, the notice and we thought maybe we we're going to have to do it on Zoom and then we thought we looked like we could get the students in here and then it looked like maybe we could get one parent in here and we were just excited that we could uh, get to this, you know, 50% capacity opportunity where we could get both parents in. Uh, so welcome and thank you for making the time in your schedule uh, to come out here and see your students get recognized. While many students will only be receiving one award this morning, we do have a number of students who have been selected for multiple scholarships. As you can imagine, an event like this has many details that need to be coordinated, from organizing the scholarships to collecting applications and contacting donors. Ms. Farnese and Ms. Stevens have put in numerous hours 
diligently preparing for this wonderful ceremony. This event certainly would not have happened without their dedication and attention to detail. So I'd like to give them a round of applause. Thank you very much. This morning, we are thankful for the opportunity to celebrate and recognize individuals within the class of 2021. However, we do not want to overlook the fact that we experienced a loss, a loss yesterday. And we ask you to join us for a moment of silence before we continue on with our ceremony. Thank you. Today, we recognize the long-standing tradition of support that Downtown West enjoys with its community partners. Through the scholarships and awards they provide for our seniors as they pursue their post-secondary education. Donors, presenters, for those of you who were able to join us this morning, we want you to know that your generosity and commitment to this community is nothing short of inspirational. Each year, you commit to supporting these students at Downingtown West, and each year, your passion and commitment prompts others to follow in your footsteps. We continue to be blessed as a community, and we thank you for your dedication to our students. Without you, this event would not be possible. Parents, you have raised your children to become the young men and women who are seated here with us today. We recognize that the awards given today, while being an honor and accomplishment unto themselves, provide only a glimpse of your students' potential and point toward their future success. Thank you for joining us to celebrate their accomplishments. Students, you represent everything that is positive about a Downingtown West education. Your commitment to high achievement ensures that we will continue to have much to celebrate in years to come. You have led by example and set a positive tone for our student body here at West. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your leadership, and I wish you all the best in your years to come. Congratulations. In the interest of time, we will not introduce each individual presenter. Rather, we have asked each one to follow along in the program and come to the microphone at the appropriate time. So now, the moment we've all been waiting for, on to the awards. Ms. Farnesi. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. The Landon Norton Family Foundation. In the year 2000, Ron and Joyce Landon established a scholarship to honor a graduating senior student from Downingtown West who was going on to a four-year college or university to continue their education. Last year, during the pandemic, they joined forces with the Norton family and raised the scholarship value to $5,000. It has always been rewarding for the Landons and now the Nortons to give back to the Downingtown community. To them, community is everything. It gives the Landon Norton Family Foundation a great deal of pleasure this year to present their award to Nicholas Pier Giovanni. Good morning. My name is Matt McCluskey. I'm the choir director here at Downingtown West and I'll be presenting the Bennett Memorial Scholarship for Patty Bennett. Um, Doug and I worked together for 25 years. We shared an office back at the Ninth Grade Center and I'm privileged and honored to present this award today. Patty Bennett was a 1993 graduate of Downingtown Senior High. During her high school career, Patty represented Downingtown in both diving and gymnastics at both the district and state championship level. She was a member of the homecoming court her senior year. She went on to attend a Christian school, Gardner-Webb University. 
It was there at the beginning of her sophomore year that she lost her life in a car accident. This scholarship was established through the generosity of family and friends at the time of her death. It is presented each year to a member of our senior class who, like Patty, was either a diver on the downtown swim team, a competitive gymnast, or who will be attending a Christian or church-related college or university in the fall. This annual memorial scholarship is presented to Jolie Lloyd. Our next award is the Patricia Hoy Conrad Memorial Scholarship. Pat was a voice teacher in our area for many, many years. It is a $1,000 award presented to a graduating senior who has displayed excellence in vocal choral activities throughout high school and who plans to pursue vocal study at an institution of higher learning. Pat Conrad was a private voice teacher in Downingtown for over 20 years. Pat was a champion for all of her students and always attended many of their concerts and musicals. Her students participated in their high school's highest choirs, performed at the district, regional, and state level, and achieved principal roles in their high school musicals. Our recipient is going to Westchester University to study education with a minor in music, and that is Jordan Montgomery. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Mary Pat Kennedy. My daughter was here about four days before she passed away from complications of type 1 diabetes. Um, to present today is Evan Wickersham's mom. Evan was going to present, but today's a bad day for everybody. So please bear with us, and this is Mrs. Wickersham. Hi, everyone. Um, in memory of Kennedy, Evan just wanted to say a few quick words about living with type 1 diabetes, that every day is difficult but you persevere and you work hard and you work with your friends to be together and to take on life's challenges. And so today, Evan wanted to present the winner of the Kennedy Marie Canzanieri Memorial Scholarship to Eliza Thur. Greetings, everyone. I'm Commander Gilbert of the Charles F. Moran Post 475, the American Legion, Downingtown, and my adjutant, uh, Chuck Whitmer. We are really pleased to be here uh, after a, a two-year hiatus. Uh, we're always pleased in the past to be able to interview uh, the scholarship applicants uh, personally. We're looking forward to doing that. Suzanne, I hope that we can get a chance to do that in the future. Uh, our member, Joseph Miller, some 30 years ago, put together a trust fund. We've been able to give scholarships out to Downingtown uh, seniors uh, every year, probably for the last 25, 30 years. Uh, we are pleased uh, to be able to do that in support uh, of higher education. Uh, the difficulty, uh, Suzanne always sends us, of highly qualified applicants and we have to sit in a room and decide who gets it. We'd like to give something to everybody, but unfortunately we're not able to do that. But I'm proud and honored uh, to say today that the, the scholarship that we have for $3,400 uh, is awarded to Jessica Harpel. <laughs> I, have, I have to tell you a story because she normally knows me as Coach Glenn. On the sidelines of West Bradford Youth Athletics where she referees uh, teams that I coach. So it's always a small world when something like this happens uh, uh, and we happen to know each other outside of here. She's probably never seen me dressed like this. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> thank you very much.
The Downingtown Area Education Association represents over 950 teachers, nurses, school counselors, and librarians. DAEA is honored to be included in today's presentation. Each year, this teacher's union wishes to gift one special student who plans to enter the world of teaching a $2,000 scholarship. I apologize, quick story. Three years ago, a student walked into my room and um, asked to be in one of the higher choirs, and I said yes. I said, we're kind of full with sopranos, so could you sing alto? And this past year, she represented us in the state level for choir. So I'm asking her, as, as a thank you for the scholarship, that someday she gives a student a chance, because this is one of the best chances I ever gave in 34 years. Our recipient is Jolie Lloyd. Good morning. Uh, I am Jerome Nowak. I taught here for 44 years. First year out, best decision of my life. <laughs> uh, this scholarship was established in my name by one of my former students, uh, Mr. Brett Geary, who is, um, right now, he's the general counsel for Boeing. Prior to that, he was CEO of Boeing in Japan. Prior to that, he worked for the Justice Department in Washington, D.C. Anyway, he was a student, just like everybody else. He saw, working for Boeing, how important technicians were. Um, so for that reason, he established his scholarship in my name for somebody that was going to a technical and trade school. Um, and this scholarship is not only here at West, he gives the same scholarship in my name at East. And it's a $5,000 scholarship. And the recipient this year is Joseph Boyce. Let <laughs> me so, put my finger on it. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Um, so my stepmom, Karen Mapes, uh, taught here at Downingtown and then at, uh, at West uh, for 35 years, uh, and she was an English teacher here, and uh, absolutely loved it here, and, and particularly loved all of her students, uh, but she had a special place in her heart for the students that uh, showed tremendous growth during their time here uh, at West, and she wanted to establish a scholarship to reward their students uh, to pursue something after, uh, after high school. And uh, this year's uh, recipient of the Karen Mapes Memorial Scholarship is Daniel Hummel. All right, mine's a little bit longer than the others, but bear with me, it's the only way I can get through this. The Karen L. Baker Scholarship is a $10,000 scholarship given to a graduating senior who best expresses in writing how cancer has affected their life. Karen Baker was my wife for 21 years and the mother of college sophomores, Megan and Emily. She bravely fought cancer for the last eight years of her life and passed away on November 3rd, 2016, at the age of 42. She was an unstoppable force of positive energy, always smiling and thinking about helping others and putting others in front of herself. This scholarship is one of her many legacies, but the one she was the most proud, honored, and humbled to be a part of. Karen had a master's degree in math education, and the opportunity to help with the expenses of higher education made her smile. The Karen L. Baker Scholarship is made possible by all the hard work of Team CMMD Foundation. 
Team CMMD was founded by Christine Meyer, a primary care doctor who has a practice in Exton. Over the past five years, Team CMMD, actually I should say 10 years, Team CMMD has raised more than $1 million for the American Cancer Society. Locally last year, we gave $150,000 to families needing financial assistance during, the fight, during their fight with cancer. Now in its seventh year of the Karen L. Baker Scholarship, Team CMMD has given over $200,000 to high school seniors whose lives have been impacted by cancer. Please give us a look on Facebook and on Instagram as well as our team page, www.teamcmmd.org. Tonight's recipient was among 54 applicants received from high school seniors throughout Chester County who unfortunately have also been affected by cancer. Here's a short excerpt from her essay. I do not view my mom's passing or battle with cancer as a tragedy. My mom was not tragic. She was so much more than her illness. My mom was a pure soul, a beacon of light in the world. She loved and cared for people wholeheartedly and they loved her back. I will admit that I mourn the fact that she will not be here for big milestones in my life, like my graduation or wedding, but I know she is watching. I will miss her presence every day. The way she smiled and laughed, how her eyes lit up and her voice grew strong when she talked about something she was passionate about. She influenced me every day as I cling to her top values and morals and world words of advice. She inspires me to persist through rough patches in my life and hold on to the happy moments. She showed me how to put others before myself and to appreciate life. She is and always will be a part of me. Please join me in congratulating Megan Kirkpatrick, the winner of the $10,000 Karen L. Baker Scholarship. Good morning. Oh. Give me a second. <laughs> Would somebody want to go in front of me? Hello, we are the Charlones, and we would first like to congratulate all the seniors here today receiving awards. Your hard work and dedication has paid off. Our brother and son, Matthew, was a graduate here in 2007. In December of that same year, he was diagnosed with leukemia. After 13 months of treatment and a stem cell transplant, Matthew lost his battle to this dreadful disease. We decided the summer after his passing, we would hold a softball tournament to raise money to give back to the community. The money raised is given to cancer-stricken families in the area. Money also raised is given to the Downingtown Little League. Their dream of building a pavilion became a reality in 2014 when the Matthew Charlone Memorial Pavilion was dedicated. We also help send chronically ill children and disabled veterans on their dream hunt of a lifetime, sort of like the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We've also established a $2,000 memorial scholarship in Matthew's name to be given to a senior baseball player, as one of Matthew's love was baseball. A tournament each year brings together over 200 players and graduates from this great school. We call our tournament Bats for Matt. This year's 13th annual scholarship recipient will be attending Temple University studying criminal justice. Congratulations to John Nielsen. Congratulations, best of luck to you. And because of the outcome and success of each year's tournament, we are also able to establish a second scholarship going to a girl softball player. This scholarship is being awarded to a girl softball player. I just said that. Matt did like girls, and girls are a requirement for our tournament. This year's recipient will be attending Jefferson University playing softball, majoring in health sciences, 
and occupational therapy. Congratulations, Annie Eliason. And congratulations to the girls' softball team, Just My Chance. Congratulations. John and Annie, congratulations to both of you from the Charlene family. We know you will make us all proud. We wish you the best for a healthy, bright, and prosperous future. Okay. Okay. DHS MPA is made up of parents of students involved in any of the Downingtown High School music programs. Our mission is to provide program support as a supplemental resource independent of a district in order to maintain the existence and the integrity of the music programs at all the Downingtown High Schools. We are pleased to be able to offer several scholarships to all three high schools. Um, I am excited to announce the winner of the Bill Eifert Scholarship is Jolie Lloyd. Congratulations, sweetheart. I guess I should have taken off my mask when I first started speaking. Um, and lastly, I am excited to announce the winner of the Thomas J. Cooper Senior Scholarship is Gretchen Hartenstein. again you may get sick of me by the end of the awards just so you know I know it says Mrs. Stevens I'm taking over for Mrs. Stevens presentations uh, as she's helping out in the counseling office today so the St. Anthony's Women's Auxiliary Award St. Anthony's Lodge in Downingtown is an Italian social club founded in 1919 the St. Anthony's Women's Auxiliary was formed in 1947 and is a nonprofit organization within the club the Women's Auxiliary supports local charities and has awarded a scholarship to a senior at Downingtown West since 2005. Applicants must meet the requirements of the scholarship committee and are asked to write an essay about their favorite childhood memory or family tradition. This year, St. Anthony's Women's Auxiliary is proud to announce two recipients of their award because they could not choose between them. Congratulations to Alexandra Morris and Jenna Otto. Robert Robbie Miller was a 2004 graduate of Downingtown West High School. He was an avid athlete who participated in track and field as well as football. One of Robbie's many passions in life was volunteering as a firefighter for the surrounding fire departments. At a young age, Robbie would be seen running to his local firehouse to watch the volunteers, including his father, rush to the public's aid. At 27, Robbie was named captain at West Bradford Fire Company 39, where he served as a training officer. In addition, he volunteered at Goodwill 52 Westchester and East Brandywine 39. His desire was to serve his community by becoming a fire chief. Robbie was a pillar in his community where he touched countless lives. In his downtime, you would never find Robbie at home. There was always a birthday party at the firehouse that needed his charismatic charm. He was always helping a friend with automotive issues. Robbie would help anyone, young or old, if they asked for assistance which was one of his many great qualities. In honor, in honor of Robbie, the Robert Miller Memorial Fund is awarding two scholarships this year to seniors who demonstrate leadership and outstanding service to our local community. So there's two, there's a monetary award and a MacBook Pro for a student to take on to college. So it's my pleasure to present the MacBook Pro to Ms. Jillian Turner. And the monetary award goes to Lance Smith. Thank 
Hello, I'm Ann Russell. I'm head of the department here for art at West. And I am very pleased to offer this scholarship on behalf of the Chester County Community Foundation. Um, this scholarship is called the Manor Avenue Foundation Scholarship. It is awarded to a student that is going to pursue a career in the arts. I do want to say a few words about this student. Um, they have worked so hard over the last three years to uh, just work with the department, National Art Honor Society, very involved. Not only um, that, they're going to Pratt next year, so that's really exciting. I haven't had a student go to New York City. Um, so I just wanted to say just a couple words because it's been such a pleasure working with them. Um, this year, the recipient for the Manor Avenue Scholarship Foundation is Lee Petrel. Good morning. Um, my name is Al Tribuno, and um, I represent the Field Foundation. And I'm be ha on, here on behalf of my son, Stephen Tribuno, that uh, set the uh, Field Foundation up after he graduated from this high school. And uh, it's for it's to recognize students, two students that had faced adversity in their uh, life, uh, real hard adversity at home, and was able to overcome that and, con and continue to do well in school and to further their education. Uh, Stephen wanted to uh, do this because he had such an easy time going through school uh, that he thought he needed to give back to people that uh, had a little bit harder time than he did. And the two awards, one is for Ashlyn Brown and Jonathan Peters. Hello, good morning. My name is Jack DeCola, Bella's favorite uncle. I am here in, uh, on behalf of the Daniel Weprick Foundation. The Daniel K. Weprick Foundation was established in July of 2017 in honor of our son, Dan, who passed away from an opioid overdose. Danny was a 2014 graduate of Downingtown East High School and a member of their boys lacrosse team. Our foundation is focused on raising awareness of opioid addiction and the epidemic in our community via our scholarship program and fundraising events. A core component of our mission is to promote engagement within our schools and increase education and prevention programs in an effort to keep our children better informed of the dangers of both prescription and illicit drug use. For information on our foundation, please visit www.dannyweprick.org. Our scholarship award is a $4,000 award, <coughs> excuse me, that is open to all students who plan on attending a trade school, community college, or a university. The foundation received several qualified applicants. The board was moved and encouraged by the essays submitted by all. After much deliberation, we are pleased to announce this year's winner from Downingtown West is James Foley. Bus Companies was established in 1942 and has been providing pupil transportation to the Downingtown Area School District continuously since, it's found, since it was founded. Every year, the company offers a scholarship to a deserving senior at each of the high schools for which the company provides student transportation. This year, Kraft has awarded their $2,500 scholarship to Isabella Hughes.
Well, it's really good to be back. Thank you for all the work that you put in, Susan, and putting this, putting this together. Semperify everyone. Uh, good morning, and uh, we're grateful to be here. My name's Jerry Gerlach. I'm the president of the board of uh, Sweet Change Wish Foundation. I'm here with my wife, Pat, also a board member. Uh, Sweet Change Wish Foundation was created in memory of our daughter, Jane Gerlach Bogue, who lost her battle with breast cancer at age uh, 47 in 2012. The foundation annually awards scholarships to two senior girls tennis players and two senior boys or girls ice hockey players who are, attend Downingtown East, West, uh, and STEM. And are, of course are going on to uh, continuing their education at a college, a university, or a trade school. This is our 10th year of, um, of giving out scholarships. And um, to date, we've given out $85,000 uh, in scholarship awards. My daughter, Jane, played on the uh, girls' tennis team from 1982 to 1984. Her quiet confidence and positive attitude took her to numerous championship uh, matches, including districts and state competition. Jane's husband, uh, Jeb Bogue, and her two sons were also involved in the area ice hockey programs. Jane bravely uh, faced her cancer foe the, sa the same way she played on the tennis courts, quietly, confidently, and intending to dismantle her opponent. This year's recipients best exemplifies those qualities that Jane was blessed with. We're pleased to present the, uh, this year's $3,500 scholarship award for tennis to Peyton Beaver. <laughs> and this year's uh, scholarship uh, for ice hockey, also in the amount of $3,500 to Anthony uh, Florkowski. Ryan P. McCall Memorial Scholarship recognizes an outstanding cross country or track and field athlete for his or her athletic as well as academic achievement. This student makes positive contributions on the trail, at the track, and in the classroom. This scholarship was created in memory of Ryan McCall, who graduated from Downingtown High School West in 2006. He participated in cross country and track before making his cross country team at the University of Tampa where he was studying allied health to become a physical therapist. To honor his life, his family created this scholarship to be awarded to an individual who has demonstrated excellence in running and academics. Congratulations to this year's Ryan P. McCall Memorial Scholarship winner, Holden Betts. Next, I'll be presenting the Hazel Laird Miller Order of the Eastern Star Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to a student planning to attend a four-year college or university to study elementary education or early childhood education. This year, the Hazel Laird Miller Scholarship Award is going to Karen Jacobson. It's my pleasure to present the Brandon Lee Archibald Scholarship. The Brandon Lee Archibald Scholarship was created in honor of Brandon Archibald, who was a brilliant and serious student. Brandon endured social anxiety, which limited his participation in team-oriented activities and enjoyment of other school functions. The scholarship is designed to help those who have experienced the same and wish to proceed with higher education but may not be able to commit 
to a four-year program and want to approach college in a small increment. The Archibald family sends their heartfelt congratulations to this year's winner, Jonathan Peters. For over 35 years, the friends and family of Susan Patrizio Johnson have awarded a scholarship in her memory. 52 years ago, Susan Patrizio was sitting where you are, and she marched up here many times and won many awards. She was an athlete, a scholar, and a friend to all, and very involved in her community. As I said, our fr her friends and family decided to award a scholarship for a student intending to go into education. She was an educator and uh, specialized in special ed. I am thrilled beyond belief to make this award today because this is a student I watched grow over the last couple of years. She is a fourth generation Downingtown graduate, Jenna Young. Good morning, uh, my name is Eric Hines. I'm the front end manager at the uh, Downingtown Wegmans store. Um, at Wegmans, one of our core values that make us who we are is high standards. There's no better example of this in action than our employees who are in pursuit of higher education. As they improve, we all improve as an organization. Since 1984, $130 million has been awarded to more than 42,500 of our employees. That's up to $6,000 per student over the course of four years. The Wegman Scholarship Selection Committee evaluates on work performance and selects the winners in the annual scholarship competition. On behalf of Wegmans and in recognition of the excellence at both work and school, I'm proud to present four four-year $1,500 per year Wegman scholarships to the following Wegman scholars. Brandon Nicholson, Corinne Buzaki, Lexi Morris, and Catherine Breckville. You sit right in front of me. Pleasure to be here. Congratulations to all the award winners. Uh, my name is Joe Izzy. I was an uh, athletic trainer here for 25 years, and upon my retirement in 2013, Dr. Manta, the orthopedic surgeon, team doctor here, wanted to start a scholarship in my name. Um, and I continue that for the last nine years um, to give back to your high school, your college, and your place of employment is very important, I believe. And to see young, great minds here today makes it even more of a reward. Um, this scholarship, the Joe Izzy Athletic Trainer, um, Training Good Citizens Award to a senior student athlete from Downingtown West who demonstrates the following qualities in the field and in the classroom. That's very important. Leadership, dedication, high work ethics, and integrity. This courteous and charismatic student must maintain a minimum GPA of 3.0. Each coach submitted a name from each team. Um, the athletes from these teams, since I'm not here, I still pick, but I have input from the athletic director, the teachers that I know, the coaches, um, and the guidance department. This student is picked down with input from those people. And it's kind of interesting when your athletic director was a student of mine. So I'm, now that's why, that's why I retired. Um, and to go along with that, a $1,000 scholarship and this plaque goes to a award winner. And again, as Ms. Campbell said, um, you know you're getting old when your students' children are getting these awards. This award is, I'm proud to make this year's winner, 2021, to Jenna Young.
Good morning. Uh, stand before you today with a very heavy heart. Um, I was a student of Downingtown when there was just one high school. I graduated in the class of 1988, uh, and my best friend was Todd Delaney, Todd Kenneth Delaney. Um, Fifteen years ago, Todd made the unfortunate decision to take his own life, and uh, that was something that you know changed myself uh, and his brother and the rest of the board members of our foundation's lives forever. And. Uh, I can say this, um, we are working very hard to bring awareness around suicide, suicide prevention, and um, we started out with, let's just remember Todd's name, and so this scholarship was founded first. Um, it has led to greater things. Um, we do a fundraiser every year, multiple fundraisers, and we are trying to bring awareness through QPR training. Um, helping people understand that it's a difficult moment in time that doesn't have to be so permanent. After Todd graduated from Downingtown, he actually went on to get married. Uh, he went on to uh, graduate from IUP, have a great job, was making plenty of money, had friends. You never would have expected something like this, and I'm sure you can all relate to this. Uh, and so I'll just say this before uh, recognizing our award winner. Tell your friends you love them today. Tell your family that you love them today. And reach out to somebody that might be going through a hard time. And so that's what we also wanted to do in establishing this scholarship was recognize somebody that had overcome some adversity or gone through a hard time or specifically even had been touched by suicide. And so we have a $1,000 scholarship to present today. Um, the board was fortunate to receive quite a few applications and some beautiful essays. But the clear winner for us was Amy Grasso. So please come up. Amy. Good morning. I keep looking for a mute button. I'm glad there is none. So. All right, it's a bad joke to start out with. All right. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Captain uh, Howard Crawford with the United States Air Force Academy. And it is my pleasure today to represent the United States Air Force and my pr privilege to present an appointment to the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. This appointment is going to a very deserving young man and is equivalent to a four-year full-ride scholarship at a top-tier university. The Air Force Academy accepts only the best of the best. This year of over 11,500 applicants, only 1,200 were appointed to enter the Academy. So you can truly see how outstanding Bevan Watson is. This student will join the long blue line, becoming an outstanding leader of character in the world's greatest Air Force. To develop as leaders, Cadets take part in a wide variety of programs, including flying aircraft, I'm sure it's gonna be his mother's favorite, free fall parachuting, <laughs> competitive athletics, military training, and foreign exchange programs around the world. At the same time, they will attend classes ranging from aeronautical and electrical engineering to history and political science. At the end of four years, they have earned a Bachelor of Science in their choice of 28 majors and will be commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force or the U.S. Space Force. For graduating cadets, the end of the school is only the beginning of their adventure. They will take the skills and knowledge they developed at the Air Force Academy and will serve in one of over 35 Air and Space Force officer career fields for the next five years, and a longer and longer if they choose. They continue to develop leadership and professional expertise for as long as they serve as Air Force officers. Graduates of the Air Force Academy have gone on to be Rhodes Scholars, Titans of Industry, politicians, generals, heroes, athletes, and astronauts. I can't wait to see what great things Bevan will do. So without further ado, on behalf of the President of the United States, Bevan Watson is hereby appointed as a cadet in the United States Air Force Ca Academy Class of 2025. Congratulations. <laughs>
Good morning. My name is Dick McConnell, and I am here on behalf of the Commandant of the United States Coast Guard Academy, Rear Admiral Bill Kelly, to present this appointment to the Coast Guard Academy Class of 2025. Each year, over 10,000 students inquire about the Academy. 2,000 complete the application process. After nine months of grueling and intensive review, 280 highly qualified men and women were accepted for an appointment and will be sworn in to the class of 2025. A scholarship valued at over $400,000 this Coast Guard Academy appointment offers a total integrated life experience. Our campus provides a secure, supportive, and highly structured environment for a unique higher education focused on academics, athletics, leadership, and professional military development. As a representative of the Coast Guard, it is my privilege to recognize and to present this United States Coast Guard Academy appointment to Maureen Alexis Hammond. just received word that Miss Gray from Beaver Creek was unable to be here, so I will be standing in for her and presenting Beaver Creek's Home and School Association Award. Beaver Creek Elementary School is proud of its dedication to its students, families, and community. The Beaver Creek PTO Scholarship Fund was created to provide a scholarship to a student who has demonstrated good citizenship and school and community involvement. This year's recipient is Isabella DeCola. Mrs. Scheip was unable to make it for Bradford Heights, so I'll be presenting on her behalf. Bradford Heights Elementary School, home of the Bulldogs, is dedicated to helping our students reach their highest potential, both academically and personally. Each year, the Home and School Association offers a book scholarship to one of their former students. This year, Bradford Heights Elementary Home and School is proud to award its scholarship to Lily Jerome and Jonathan Peters. On behalf of Brandywine Wiles Elementary Home and School, the recipients of the Brandywine Wallace Home and School Book Scholarship were well-respected leaders at Brandywine Wallace Elementary School. Brandywine Wallace is proud of these seniors' accomplishments, and they wish them the best in their future endeavors. The Brandywine Wallace Home and School Book Scholarship goes to Morgan McBride and Nicholas Pugirvani. On behalf of the Brandywine Wallace Elementary faculty and staff, Brandywine Wallace is known as the little school on the hill with a community of learners focused on effort and achievement. Both of these students exude these qualities. Congratulations to the Brandywine Wallace faculty and staff award winners, Bryn Rashan and Dylan Engelhart.
Hello. My name is Matthew Barr. Uh, for the past four years, I have had the opportunity to support this year's senior class uh, as their assistant principal. Um, to the students in the room, I want you to know I'm speaking on behalf of Dr. Barker, all your teachers and staff. Uh, we love you um, more than you guys probably realize. Um, and to the parents that are in the room, thank you. Um, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your children's lives for the past four years. Uh, it, it has truly been a gift and an honor. Um, we also recognize the fact that a lot of individuals have an impact on your children as they go through their elementary school program. So in that light, I have the honor of presenting two elementary school-based scholarships. The first one, the East Ward Elementary Home and School Association Book Scholarship. East Ward Elementary School is located in the borough of Downingtown. At East Ward, the Cougars pride themselves on building an extremely positive community while challenging their students to learn and grow as individuals. This year, the East Ward Home and School Association is proud to present its book scholarship to Megan Goss. Shimona Creek. Shimona Creek Elementary prides itself on creating a positive learning environment which promotes a sense of belonging for all, while allowing students to develop their academic and social emotional skills. This year's Shimona Creek Home and School Association Scholarship goes to Mr. James Foley. Good morning. My name is Susan Ritchie, and I am part of the Home and School Association Board for Springton Manor Elementary. I am here to present today's award to one of the high school seniors who went through Springton Manor Elementary, but has also shown good school and community involvement and is going to be attending a post high school program. I was actually able to sit on the board to go through all of the applications, and I must say, I was quite impressed with the amount of community involvement to this year's seniors, so thank you. This year's award is going to Victoria Naftal. Hello, my name is Heidi Slater. I'm here on behalf of <clears throat> both the West Bradford faculty and staff and the West Bradford Home and School Association. We have two separate scholarships being awarded, but we happen to have chosen the same recipient. This year's uh, senior to receive these uh, exemplify the West Bradford Charger traits, which are courage, honesty, appreciation, respect, grit, empathy, and responsibility. All of these qualities can be found in this year's recipient, Tessa Bernhardt. Congratulations. Okay, the Marsh Creek Sixth Grade Center prides itself on creating well-rounded students who will succeed academically and socially. The sixth, the sixth Grade Center, Marsh Creek's Home and School Association, would like to recognize the following student for her, his academic achievement and good citizenship. Congratulations to James Foley.
Downingtown Middle School. Pullman School is proud to be able to award uh, West Senior with a book scholarship each year. DMS collected many applications and were very encouraged to see so many students involved in their school and community. The applicants were asked to share their most memorable moment while attending DMS. This could be a valuable lesson they learned, a favorite teacher, or just a fun memory that they still cherish today. Reading through the DMS applications, the home and school members were able to see a glimpse of an amazing year for these seniors, even despite the complications that they had this year. Thank you to all the applicants and best of luck to all of you seniors. Continue to work hard and always stay active in your community. This year, the Downingtown Middle, Downingtown Middle School has selected Leanne Hillidor. Okay, and I just received word that Mrs. Duran's not here, is she? You are here, wonderful. Yay, good. I was gonna cover for you if you were not here. Wonderful. Yes, that's okay, I'm glad you're here. Um, good morning. It's a small crowd. My name is Karen Duran, and I'm one of the co-presidents of the Downingtown West High School Home and School Association. And I have the distinct honor today to be awarding this year's Home and School Scholarships to four deserving students. Although the COVID pandemic continues to disrupt the normal that we knew, Downingtown West Home and School Association is thankful to you all, to the entire West community, to the students, parents, teachers, administration, staff, that who have adjusted to a new normal and continue to support our organization and our activities. We've missed the in-person cooperation and collaboration, but have successfully pursued our schedule, including virtual meetings, and our most recently, our fabulous senior celebration party. I hope all of you who went to prom and enjoyed the party um, appreciate, <laughs> appreciated the effort of the administration and staff and the Home and School Association to make that happen. Downingtown West Home and School Scholarships are awarded to graduating seniors who have attended West for at least two years, have demonstrated good citizenship, positive, uh, sorry, school and community involvement, and have shared a positive experience they had at West. We are pleased to be awarding four scholarships. The scholarship win recipients are Owen Chapau, Abigail Gallo, Bryn Rashan, and Joseph Boyce. Are you Joseph? I'm Abigail. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Bryn. Thank you. Is Owen here? No? Good morning, seniors. I'm John Beck president of West Bradford Youth Athletics. Each year, WBYA recognizes graduating seniors who demonstrate a balance in academics and athletics. Candidates for our scholarship must have participated with WBYA for at least three seasons. They must have kept a 3.0 or better GPA, and they must be attending a two or four year college, university, or vocational school in the upcoming year. WBYA traditionally hosts a Winterfest fundraiser each year, and the proceeds from Winterfest are specifically earmarked for scholar-athlete scholarships. Despite the fact that we weren't able to host our annual Winterfest fundraiser this past year due to the global pandemic, we were still able to garner donations for this cause from our amazing and resilient community. I'm proud to honor our 2021 WBYA Senior Scholarship winners. The following students will receive $200 scholarships. I got a bunch of them, guys, so just when I call your name, come on up. They should be in order on the table, okay? Luke Venzi. John Nielsen. Oh, there we go. Was this not working? Was I not talking into this? I'm good, okay. Kendall Henry. Applause 
Mark Antonio Guarnier. Owen Chapau. <laughs> Jessica Harpel. <laughs> the following student will receive a $300 scholarship. Elliot Udell. The following student will receive a $400 scholarship. Carrie Schmidt. <laughs> and last but not least, the following student will receive a $500 scholarship. Jonathan Peters. Congratulations, seniors. On behalf of WBYA, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. OK. On behalf of the US representative, Chrissy Houlihan. The Office of U.S. Representative Chrissy Houlihan would like to recognize the following students for their outstanding citizenship and positive contributions to their school and local community. The Chrissy Houlihan Good Citizen Award goes to Bevan Watson and Isabella Hughes. On behalf of U.S. Senator Carolyn T. Kamita. Senator Kamita is a leader in championing our communities, defending our environment, and working to ensure a safer, cleaner, and brighter future for the next generation of Pennsylvanians and beyond. She would like to honor two outstanding students from Downingtown West who display good citizenship and community involvement. She is pleased to recognize the following students, Isabella DeCola and Nicholas Gasano. Finally, on behalf of Senator Katie Muth, the Senator Katie Muth Good Citizenship Award would like to recognize two students who exhibit exemplary skills of service, engagement, and community building. The goal of this award is to recognize these individuals and encourage them to continue to develop the fine skills that they already possess. This year's Good Citizenship Awards go to Ashlyn Brown and Nicholas Piergiovanni. Each year for the past 15 years, the Mutual Fire Foundation awards a $1,000 scholarship to three Downingtown West high school seniors. All applications are reviewed by an independent panel of judges that evaluate each applicant on academic achievement, community service, leadership, and communication skills. This year, the Mutual Fire Foundation is proud to announce the following three students as its scholarship recipients. Nicholas Casano, Kendall Henry, and Avery Smith. <laughs> the 
The Women's Club of Downingtown was founded nearly 105 years ago in September 1914. The club mission statement was to develop the educational, civic, and social interests of its members and to advance the welfare of the community. The following two young women represent these qualities and are outstanding citizens of the Downingtown West community. Congratulations to the 2021 Women's Club of Downingtown Scholarship recipients, Jillian Turner and Eliza Thur. Good morning. My name is Carmen Mulhern. I'm the Associate Director of A Path to Hope. We're a community organization that seeks to provide mental health resources and education in our area. Every year, A Path to Hope honors a student in each high school and middle school in the district whose behaviors or actions have exceeded expectations to contribute significantly towards the improvement of the school community while aligning with our mission. This student shows a strong commitment to the care for the mental well-being of their peers and others involved in the school community. This year, Downingtown West has chosen Morgan West to receive this award. Good morning, my name is Mindy Patton and I'm the president of the Delta Kappa Gamma Society, which is an international society comprised of women educators. And we strive for um, growth and excellence in education. Our local chapter, Beta Omicron, is comprised of educators from Coatesville, Downingtown, and Westchester areas. We are pleased this year for, to announce our scholarship to an outstanding young lady who we believe has the potential to become an excellent educator. Our award this year, and we also give one at East and one in Coatesville, but our award this year at West goes to Allison Lannan. <laughs> and I would just like to say this about Allison. Allison has dreamed of becoming a teacher since she was a young lady. She stated that she wants to be that teacher, the teacher who is a role model and that everyone wants to be like. She is to be commended for her work with special needs children. And she is majoring a dual major at Westchester University in early education and special education. And Allison, I'm sure you have been that student for a lot of your teachers. And I can't wait until you become that teacher for all of your students. Good luck, Allison. this is the last time you'll hear from me <laughs> for these next three awards. Okay, Solar Cities and Adragon Aeroponics are partners in sustainable solutions. This year, Solar Cities had the privilege of working with a student intern from Downingtown West. This young lady seamlessly integrated into their team. Her first tasks involved in assisting their company with their new corporate platform. Then she took the lead in their project to finish their first book on how to build your own garden biodigester for fertilizer and fuel. This book is now currently selling worldwide. She also did major edits on their growing and assembly guide for new grow walls by Earth Ponics in Lan Lancaster County. And finally, she demonstrated her exemplary communication skills by helping to teach a course at Dickinson College. Biogas Bob Homburg, as his Solar Cities colleagues and friends knew him, was a university professor, a biogas researcher, and a respected elder in the, in the industry. His mission in life was to make people around the world aware of the benefits of small-scale small biogas. He wanted people to have free access to the knowledge and skills necessary to produce fuel and fertilizer on their own. 
for a student intern who has demonstrated exceptional skills, intelligence, and dedication to this mission today on what would have been Biogas Bob's 74th birthday, Solar Cities and Ad Adragon Aeroponics are proud to present the very first Robert A. Homburg Memorial Award of $1,000 to Jillian Turner. Chester, Delaware County Farm Bureau is pleased to offer scholarship grants of up to $1,000 toward higher education of Chester County, Delaware County, and Philadelphia County High School students who plan to pursue a career in agriculture or an agriculture-related field. This year's recipient is Joe Kamali. The United States Figure Skating Graduating Seniors Program recognizes those student athletes who have worked hard to pursue figure skating while maintaining their academics in high school. While figure skating is not a traditional school sport, it recognizes this, it requires the same dedication, perseverance, and time management as any other varsity sport. It is the goal of U.S. Figure Skating to help ensure these student athletes are also recognized along with their peers for the skills that they possess. I am pleased to announce that Jordan Bailey has been awarded the Silver Level Graduating Seniors Award. Congratulations. <laughs> She's fallen on the ice. Heal up there, girlfriend. Good morning. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate all of today's award recipients and the entire class of 2021. This morning, I will be presenting the Charles Way Scholarship. Charles Way is a 1915 graduate of Downingtown High School. This award is presented each year to a male and female student athlete that exemplify the qualities of leadership, all around athletic ability, academic achievement, and all American character. Each recipient will receive a scholarship in the amount of $1,000. Our first recipient is a member of the Girls Across, Cross Country, and Outdoor Track programs. She is a 2021 All Chestmont selection for lacrosse at Attack. Her coach says she is every coach's dream. Her individual skill, competitive drive, and dedication to her team are inspiring to all. She leads by example with humility in everything she does. This young lady has a cumulative GPA of 4.46 and will be continuing her academic and lacrosse career at Bucknell University in the fall. It's an honor to present the 2021 Charles Way Scholarship to Eliza Thur. I'd like to wish Eliza and her teammates the best of luck as they continue through district play. Our second recipient is a four-year member of both the basketball and lacrosse programs. He is a 2021 All-Area Honorable Mention in basketball, as well as a team captain and 2021 First Team all Chestmont selection in lacrosse. Throughout his career, he has made significant contributions to both programs. His coaches say he is a consummate teammate who is dedicated, displays a competitive spirit, and holds himself to a higher standard. This young man has a cumulative GPA of 3.1 and will be continuing his academic and lacrosse career at your Sinus College in the fall. It's an honor to present 2021 Charles Way Scholarship to Ryan Dever. And I'd like to wish Ryan and his teammates the best of luck as they continue with district play. Hello, my name is Debbie Hetrick, and I'm the member of the uh, Downingtown West Cheer Association. The Downingtown West Cheerleading Association Scholarship has been established to honor a college-bound senior cheerleader 
whose love of the sport and dedication to the spirit of his or her team is evident. All candidates are evaluated based on their commitment to the sport of cheerleading, high school academic record, extracurricular activities, community service, student leadership, and recommendations. On behalf of the association and coaches, I'm happy to present three scholarship awards this year. Congratulations to Sophia Bandy, Catherine Breckbill, and Kendall Henry. John P. Schaffron was a student who attended Downingtown Senior High School and was actively involved in many phases of his high school life. To this day, the National Honor Society awards a scholarship to a student who exemplifies John's qualities of outstanding scholarship, leadership, and outstanding character. It gives me very great pleasure to award this scholarship to Nicholas Pisano. The Downingtown West chapter of the National Honor Society nominated the following student for the National Honor Society Scholarship. This student exemplifies outstanding scholarship, character, leadership, and service. This year's winner is Isabel Hughes. Thank you. All right, I'm going to try to make it through this just one time without crying. Uh, my name is Brittany McGregor, and I have the distinct honor of running West Student Council. Um, and every year when I come up here, I usually make some version of the same speech, which is pretty much a list of events my officers have orchestrated throughout the year and all the work it took to do so. But this year, of course, is all different. Um, for the majority of this year, my officers have had to do something I've never had to ask a group of kids to do before. And that is to remain positive, continue to build morale, and keep up the student body, and keep the student body feeling connected to the building, all while they were forced to face many canceled events, Zoom classes, and a feeling of their own disconnection. This group of girls really stepped up to the plate. They never mourned their lost events, but instead they focused their energy on doing everything they could to make this year as positive as possible for the student body. And that is nothing short of incredible. For every idea that they came up with that had to be shot down due, the pan due to the pandemic, they never lost hope and they never stopped trying. Their fight to keep up the West culture throughout this year shows their dedication to the spirit and love they have for this school. Luckily, they do get to end of the year with some normalcy, they're currently getting rest, ready for our Mr. West charity fundraiser. Tomorrow night, seniors buy your tickets. And they also are planning one final goodbye for seniors the day after graduation. They are truly a tremendous group of students and I am sure to never forget them. I would like to thank them for their contributions to West by offering them a small book scholarship as they head off to their prospective universities. Please join me now in congratulating Abigail Gallo, Isabella DeCola, Emery Cottingham, Emily Hacker, and Kiara Schuster. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for coming out here and being with us today. Uh, 
again, I'm so uh, just pleased that we were able to spend some time together in person to be able to recognize uh, each of our seniors and their accomplishments. Um, hard to believe, uh, two weeks, guys, two weeks from today, uh, we are going to be uh, walking into Kottmeyer Stadium and beginning uh, our graduation uh, processional, which is just exciting. And actually, um, by this time, we'll be done. Uh, so. <laughs> You know, that's, that's also wonderful. Uh, so, listen, uh, seniors, I'm excited for you. Uh, you guys have been wonderful to have here, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to being able to move through these last couple progressions. This is a big, a big box to check, uh, getting through uh, today and being able to do this with you. Looking forward uh, to being able to start uh, graduation practices here next week on Friday, 745 in the morning. Uh, you know. We'll see you guys then. Uh, and parents, uh, we're so thankful to be able to, to do that in person with you and looking forward to having everybody here uh, for graduation. Take care. We'll see you soon. Have a good one.